Hi everyone! Today I'm going to teach you how to stitch shorts on your serger. These are some little shorts, but keep in mind you can create them in any size you might want to. Not only can you do shorts, but maybe you want to do a pair of pants. So with this tutorial, when we do these shorts, you can also apply the construction approach for these shorts to a pair of pants. I think you're going to enjoy it. Maybe you've never created any type of garment on your serger. If not, this is a great place to begin. I'm going to walk you through how to create these little shorts on your serger. Let's serge! To share with you how fast and easy it is to serge a pair of shorts together. I love to create different types of garments and so today we're going to do a precious little pair of shorts because these are in a really small size. You'll notice that I've picked some summery fun fabrics. I've matched the thread to my fabrics. These are going to be a pair of shorts for my little grandson so he maybe can use these for his swimming trunks or just to sport around this summer in. And I also want to warn you, it's pretty addicting because once you make one, you'll probably want to make a ton. Let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how easy it is to create shorts on your serger. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take one of our fronts, place it one of our backs, right sides together, and we're going to clip that inseam. And I love using my little wonder clips. These are precision wonder clips. So we'll just go ahead and slip one of those right in the center there. And we're going to do that for both fronts and back. So once again, I'm going to grab my other set, place those seams together, right sides together, and slip a clip on it. And now we're going to take that over to our serger and we're going to serge those short seams. All right, so we're going to serge our inseam. I'm going to go ahead and line up the edge of my fabric with my my L, that's actually a seam allowance marking on my machine. So when I have my width set to M, that's going to give me a 5 8 inch seam allowance, which is what this pattern calls for and is most likely most of the industry standard when you buy a simplicity pattern, a buttery pattern, a cause pattern, you know, different pattern lines like that usually do a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So I've got my machine set up to accomplish that 5 8 inch seam allowance nice and accurately. So let's go ahead and search. And I'm also using a four thread overlock for these seams. Now it's time to seam the other front and back together. I just searched from seam to seam. And so here we've got that beautiful seam, four thread overlock. And you'll notice, like I said, that I've got the threads matching the fabric. So when I open up that seam, let's open it up and take a look at it. Isn't that just beautiful? Nice, flat, and accurate. So now I'm gonna do a little pressing and then we'll start our next seam. I always like to give it a good press when I stitch a seam, serge a seam, whenever I'm creating or sewing a garment together or any different projects. I always like to set those seams with a bit of heat. So now we're just going to open them up, both of our pieces, and we're going to place them right sides together. And once I have them right sides together, I'm going to grab a few more of my clips. And so right here on that center seam, I'm going to take one of the seam allowances and position it to one direction and then the opposite seam allowance and place it in the opposite direction. So these two seams are, these two seam allowances are going to go in two opposite directions. And that's going to give you a nice, uh, kind of a, those little seams are just going to nestle together and that's going to give you a nice flat seam. So we'll give that a clip. Just going to line up the edges, 
clip and another clip once we've clipped our pattern pieces together right sides together we're going to take it back to the serger and we're going to serge the inseam that curved seam from the top edge all the way to the top edge of the other side all right so let's serge this seam And when I get close to this clip, that's where those little seams are positioned in two different directions. So I'm just going to give it a look-see. I've got the top going this way, got the bottom going back that way. So I'll just, I can even just kind of lift my foot just a little bit, make sure that seam's going in that direction, the direction that I want it in, and then just continue forward. Now that that inseam is surged, once again, I'm going to grab my iron and I'm going to give it a press. And isn't that just so nicely finished? Your seams are finished. It looks so professional. No raveling. I want to explain something to you a little more in depth. This is a question that I always get whenever I'm doing classes. We're using a four thread overlock, so that means we're using overlock needle one and overlock needle two. You'll notice the lines here. You notice where it has the L and the R? That stands for your left overlock needle and your right overlock needle. Once again, we have our left, which is our overlock one needle, and our right, which is our overlock two needle, installed in our machine. And on this pattern, it calls for 5 8 inch seam allowance. This is a way for me to have a seam allowance guide. You'll notice here on my width dial, I have it aligned up with the letter M. They've designed this serger to, to allow me to have a seam allowance guide. If I have the width set to M, and I'm using that overlock needle 1, which is all the way to the left, and of course right now I'm also using the overlock needle two, but the leftmost needle, and that's my overlock needle one or my left needle. If I have the width aligned with M, all I have to do is align the raw, the raw edge of the fabric along the letter L, and that's gonna accommodate a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Now when you get through, you've already surged off 3 8 of an inch if you're set to this, so you'll have your quarter inch seam left on your garment, just like I have here. But it's already surged off that extra seam allowance, which with this nice little magical measurement or recipe, it's going to accommodate that 5 8 inch seam allowance if I have guided my fabric along the line just under the L. Now you'll notice it also has the R. If I were to be surging with an overlock that I'm using a three thread overlock, that means I would remove the left needle and only leave the right needle in. So once again, if I have my width set to M, and I would guide my raw, raw edge of the fabric along the R, only using the right overlock needle, so remember this, the left needle is gonna be removed, then once again, I've accommodated a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And that's just a way for this serger to give you a way to create or accommodate that 5 8 inch seam allowance, which is what we see in the industry standard when we use those patterns, Simplicity or McCall's or any other ones, Butterick. If I've left one out, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But just to give you a little explanation of how that works. And there's a variety of baby lock sergers that work the same way. So if you have a baby lock serger and you see those guides along your knife cover, all you need to do is set your, your whip to M and then just follow along what I explained to you about your needles. I hope that helps you. Now we see how we have our front seam and our back seam all surged together. And that was done in one curvy U-shaped seam. The next thing that I like to do 
is go ahead and put a surged edge finished along each bottom of the pair of shorts. Now keep it in mind that we have a front and a front. So we have our two fronts on this side and a back and a back, okay? But they're already surged together, right? So if I pick this up to where you can see the right side of the fabric, this is where we want to surge all the way across and create just an edge finish. And that's going to set us up for an easier way, a nice finished way for us to hem our pair of shorts. Now I'm going to show you two ways of hemming. We can surge our edge, each one of them is going to get a surge at the bottom, and then we can do our side seams and then we can hem one of them in the round. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one leg to where we hem it in the round and one leg to where we hem it straight. And I'll show you both of those techniques. And you can decide which one is your favorite way of hemming your shorts. I always love to find an easier way, so definitely I'm gonna give you a couple of choices. Now when I search the bottom of my little pant legs, my little shorts legs, I don't want to surge off any fabric. So I'm just going to set up my fabric and align it to where I'm skimming the blade. And because I have my serger set up where that width is set to M, I know because I like to piece quilts on this machine, I just know that if I align the edge of my fabric right here where the shiny metal meets the brushed metal, that's going to set the edge of my fabric to where it's going to be just skimming along the left side of the blade. So it won't really be cutting off much fabric. If I cut a little bit, I'm not going to worry too much about it, but I just kind of want it to allow to it to just skim the blade. Okay, so now it's time to surge the bottom of our other leg. Now, I will tell y'all, pay attention before you start surging that other bottom edge and just make sure it is the other bottom edge. See, here's my little, my curved seam, my, you know, my inside seam where you have the front and the back, you know, that's right there in the middle where the little edges in between the legs are, okay? Short seam, short seam. Why am I saying that? Because guess what I did? I actually surged the top edge of my, top of my pants. I even pressed it all pretty. Okay, but you're not going to do that. But you know what? I thought I'd just share that funny little faux pas with y'all because I had to rip it out. But that's okay. So just make sure you're surging the bottom edges of your pants. Your pants, your little legs, not pants, but your shorts. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and edge finish the bottom of the second leg. And another thing with a serger, always just make sure you take a look-see every once in a while. Make sure you're not letting any of that fabric fold up underneath on itself because you have a blade that's cutting and you don't want to get any, you don't want to let any fabric cut that's not supposed to cut. Have that bottom of my second short leg surge. Okay, so now we're going to take it over to my little pressing station and we're going to press under the hem of one of my legs, okay? Now I've just folded it in half wrong sides together so I can get a nice little visual of the whole form of my little shorts. So I know that this is the bottom of my pants legs. I keep saying pants, but I mean the bottom of my shorts. But you know, what's kind of cool about this is if you're making pants, then it would be the same concept. If you're making shorts, same concept. So maybe you don't want to make shorts and you want to make pants. This can also just kind of graduate over to the techniques and the way I'm doing it to help you make a pair of pants. All right, so once again, we're surged on the two bottom legs. So I'm gonna grab one of them and just kind of fold it flat. There's that little short seam. You can compare it, make sure that's our, our little inside leg seam here. And now we're gonna measure up our hem. So just follow whatever hem your pattern tells you to use. 
a lot of patterns will have a little bit of an angle in here and they'll also tell you what what how much hem they're allowing so I'm just going to give mine a little measure mine's going to be a one inch hem and so I'm going to come in here and fold up my one inch hem all right I'm just going to make sure that nothing is folded up underneath it I'm going to start with my center seam I'm going to fold it up and grab my ruler Got my one inch mark right on the bottom of the folded edge of the hem. And I love to use glass head pins because when I do something like this, I know I can press on top of those pins and they're not gonna melt. And I'm also using my wool mat. I have that set up beside my serger just in case you wanna know what that is. It's this. And I have it on a table. There's not a... um plastic mat or under anything underneath this it's a it's a wooden table that I have mine on all right so I have that pinned in place and I'll go ahead and just do that measurement from the center seam to the left and the center seam to the right and have it all pinned in place and then we'll press it Okay, so I've got that all pinned in place. I'm going to go ahead and give it a press before I move to the other side. There's a variety of little irons on the market. This is the little mighty steam iron that I have but I really don't fill it with water I don't steam with it but I use it um, without steam a lot I'm gonna go ahead and just spray a little a little starch maybe you like best press whichever is your favorite I love to definitely press nice and neat when I'm creating garments or any of my projects it really does just give you a professional finish so see how that hem is nice and tamed there I'm going to go ahead and just trim off that little serger tail. It's kind of bugging me. And now we'll go ahead and pin the rest of the hem. Yeah, I can press right on top of those little glass head pins and it's not going to bother them a bit. All right, that's nice and it's got a nice memory to it. I'm going to pull my straight pins out and then we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and we're going to just top stitch a hem in one of our shorts legs. I've turned my sewing machine on and I've set my machine for a left straight stitch so that way I can guide the left edge of my presser foot just along that left edge of the surged edge. So I'm going to go ahead and just position my presser foot and my needle to where I'm right there at the beginning. I'll just take um, a couple of little tack, stitch when, tack stitches when I start and, and when I end. So now I've stitched my straight stitch hem in. Very pretty. And I made sure that I matched my bobbin thread to my fabric. And I had the same color in my needle also. But because I'm stitching and hemming, I am stitching that hem in upside down, this is the bobbin thread that we're seeing. So I definitely wanted to make sure I coordinated the bobbin thread along with the fabric.
The next thing I want to do is to go ahead and mark the hem on the second leg of my shorts. Now I'm not going to stitch the hem into this one, but I'm going to go ahead and pin it and press it. Then I'll remove the straight pins and then that way the bottom of this leg is going to have a memory and a crease to where the hem is. So whenever I go to do that hem in the round, it's going to be easy for me to flip it up and I won't have to do any measuring once it's already sewn to where I have the side seams and then it'll be in the round. And this is a smaller size, so it, you know, it can be a little more difficult, a little more cumbersome whenever you're doing a smaller size. So I'm going to go ahead and get that hem marked in here and give it a pressing memory. Give it a little starch all the way across the bottom. Give it a good press. Get that memory in there. Give that fabric a memory. So that's another thing. If ever you're you're um, sewing something, you kind of need to press it, but you don't really want that seam to be a final mark in the fabric. Then make sure you don't. Use starch, make sure you don't use a best press, and don't press it like very, very well. Just give it a light press if you're using it just for markings. That way you don't set the seam in permanently. Okay, so we've got that pinned, pressed, measured. We'll remove those pins. So once again, we're not gonna uh, we're not gonna stitch these in. So there we go. We've got a little memory for our hem here. Alright, so now we've got one of our pants legs hemmed. Oh my goodness, one of our shorts legs hemmed. <laughs> okay, and now we'll once again just position our little shorts wrong sides together. Now it's time for us to stitch each of those outer side seams. So I'll take and I will flip it right sides together and then I'll go ahead and clip in those outer two edges. So the side seam. So this is the side that I've already created my hem. I want to clip this in place nice and accurate because this is already hemmed. So I want to keep this from shifting. And we'll do that all the way up the side. And we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side, but it's going to be just a little bit different because this side is not hemmed, but we're going to open it up. We're going to extend that bottom hemmed little marked edge. See, there's our crease, but we're going to fold it straight out, straight out. And we're going to, again, we're going to align those bottom edges. and clip all the way up the side. Okay, so the, the only difference between the opposite side and this side is the fact that we're going all the way down to the bottom of the raw edge where it's been surged and then our other one, it's clipped in place to where the, the hem is already in place. So we're going to go to the serger. We're going to serge those side seams from top to bottom.
And because this side is the side that we've already hemmed, we're going to leave a bit of a tail and we're going to pull the tail up through the stitching. And I'm going to go ahead and show you that right now. So I'm going to clip my, my tail about three inches. Okay, so I recently picked up these clover darning needles with a latch hook eye. Let's open this up and let's see how this work, works. I've used the Havel's double eyed needles quite a lot and I love them. They, they do great. And I picked this up when I was out and about. Let's see how this is going to work. I think I'm going to probably really like this one also. It's always fun to get um, a notion here or there something a little bit different that makes things really easy to do. Those nifty, nifty little notions. Clover provides us with lots of notions. So it has a little latch hook eye right here. Let's see right there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and slip the blunt end through here, through the back of the stitch, or the front of the stitch here, that seam. And then we're just going to take the tail of the stitch. And I'm going to put a little pressure and push down. Did you see how it just kind of latched into there nicely? All right, so I'm going to make it a little bit kind of a loop to where there's not a really, really long, long tail. And then I'm going to go ahead and just give it a pull. Right. Ooh, I liked that. What did y'all think? That was pretty cool. Nice and nifty. I, I like that notion. Thank you, Clover. Let me show y'all one more time what that is, just in case y'all might want to grab one of these. And there's two in a pack. Okay, I really liked that notion. Now, the next thing we'll do is just trim that extra tail. Just about to right there. And that's going to stay in place for me nicely. Now, if you're a person that wants to go in and either do a little zigzag stitch here or put some fray block onto that seam, you can do that too. Myself, if I leave about a, an inch into that seam, I'm really comfortable with it not coming out. So I'm going to leave it just like it is. I went ahead and serged the other side of the shorts just like we did previously on the opposite side. And this is the side that we're going to hem the shorts in the round. So here you'll notice there's that seam that we, that crease that we did earlier, not the seam, but the crease. And then we're going to go ahead and fold that up. So there's that crease that we, we did earlier. So the fabric would have a nice memory. So we already know where that hem needs to be. So I'm going to go ahead and slip a few straight pins in. So I'm going to put one at each side, each inside seam and, and the outer side seam. And then I'm going to go ahead and place a pin in the center of that side seam and the inside seam. That's kind of how I like to do it. I kind of like to split the difference there. We'll do that on the opposite side of the pan of the leg also. So now I have it pinned in place. It was really easy to do because we had pre-pressed the hem in and we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to hem our little pant, the little bottom of our shorts in the round. You'll notice on my machine I've removed my accessory compartment and that gives me the open arm on my machine. So that's going to give me the ability to more easily stitch something in the round. I'm going to grab my little pair of shorts and I'm going to slip it around the open arm. So there's the opening of our, our pair of little shorts leg and slip it around. So now it's it's going to just glide around the open arm of the machine. I like to start on one of the inseams when I'm hemming. I just find that that way when I start and finish it's going to be on the inside of the leg and it's not going to be uh, that noticeable. So I still have my machine set up for a left 
straight stitch. I'm going to guide once again the left edge of my presser foot along that top edge of the surged edge. So we'll just go ahead and lower our presser foot. We've got it nice and in place. I'll remove that, that pin. And then we'll stitch the hem all the way around. So I always like to do a reverse stitch, to so do a few locking stitches at the end of the seam. Just for security. Okay, so that's stitching the hem in the round, so we'll go ahead and remove that from the machine. Now that you've seen a couple of different ways to set that hem in in the round, or on the straight stitching that straight stitch while you're the bottom of your shorts are still straight you can decide which one's best for you so here's the leg that I did in the round so you'll notice that when the bottom comes up and over your serge seam is along the uh, the side serge seam is right here but you're not seeing the serge seam along that edge now let's look at the other leg here's the leg of the one that we stitch that seam in straight once it's finished you're going to see that serge seam ride all the way to the edge of the of the leg so here's the side where we hid our little serger loop in there so myself i like either one of them i love this method because it is so fast and so easy um, you're just kind of whipping it straight around but either one is quite easy so you get to decide which way is your favorite and you can use that you can use whichever one you feel like you like the best next we're gonna do the elastic we're gonna set the elastic in the waistband on the serger so what I've done is I made my measurement for the pair of shorts that I was doing and this is going to be for my grandson so I measured his little waist I took this elastic I put it around his little waist area I just kind of held my fingers right in this area and then I kind of pulled it to kind of see if he was comfortable with this amount of elastic so in my opinion whenever I do elastic I always try to get a fitting on the person that's going to be wearing the garment it, themselves because I feel like that gives them from experience the best fit so definitely try to measure your elastic on the person that you're stitching them for and once you've done that once or twice for that person then you can take some notations make you some notes and even possibly measure that person's waist size and then note what size elastic that you're using. I'm using a knitted elastic. And write that down, what size elastic. This is, uh, this is going to be a three quarter inch elastic waistband. So just make those notes for the, possibly the weight of the, if it's for a child, for sure, you could do the, you could do the weight, you could do the age, you could do the weight, then you can measure their waist, and then you can do your measuring little, um, you can do your measuring method like I do. And then once you're comfortable and you've created a garment with that recipe, you can always refer back to those notes. So here I've done that. I've, I've tested it. I've made a few pairs of shorts for him. And I know that this is the right length of elastic for him. So we're going to take it to the serger and we're going to just serge this end of the elastic close. I'm using that four thread overlock also to do this seam. Throughout our project, that's the stitch we've been using the whole time. And I don't really need to cut much of this elastic off, so I'm just going to align it right there by where the shiny metal meets the brushed metal. So now we've stitched it together. I'm going to trim those extra tails. 
and I just need to stitch it one time because you'll see as we continue forward this elastic is going to be nice and secure in our project. Here's our elastic where we've surged. I want to quarter the elastic so I want to have four positions to line up and those positions that I mark are going to line up to the front and the back seam and to each outer side seam. So I'm going to just take where I've surged and if I take it like this, that's going to give me a mark. So I have a, a marking pen. This is a disappearing marking pen, a water soluble. This isn't going to show. So if you end up using a marking pen that doesn't disappear as long as it doesn't uh, fade when you wash, um, you definitely can do that too. So here we have that mark. Now I'm going to take this mark and the surge seam and bring those together. All right, there I'm going to line up those two markings. All right, and then I'll just slide my fingers to one folded edge and we'll place a mark there. And then we'll do the same thing for the opposite edge. So we'll take having those line up, then we'll just bring our fingers over and now we're going to mark on that outer fold. All right, so we have our marks in place. Let's go ahead and take it over to the serger and I'll show you how we're gonna put this waistband into your pair of shorts on the serger. Let's take a look at the inside side of our little shorts. From this view, you'll notice that this back side here, the curve is deeper. So this is my back. This seam is a bit straighter uh, right here. This one is a bit straighter, this one's more curved. So this is the back and this is the front. What I typically do is I line up that serge seam on the elastic with that back seam on my little pair of shorts and that's kind of my starting point. So let's go ahead and do that over at the serger. So if you'll notice, I have my shorts laying here on the edge of my serger. This is my back seam. And I still have the shorts position to where this would be the inside and this is the right side of your fabric. So what I like to do is just lay that there so you can see it. And let me show you the elastic also. So here's the elastic. Here's the seam. Here is the seam that we surged. Here's our markings. So I'm going to take the elastic and turn it to where now those markings are on the inside of the elastic and we're gonna align that surged seam on top of our back surge seam in our shorts and that's gonna align right there on that seam now if you want to you could clip in place each one of those markings to the seam that it needs to line up with so remember Back seam is going to be right here. We'll center that over the back seam. Straight across of, of this seam is going to be your front seam. So if you wanted to clip those in place, let's just go ahead and do that for, for ease purposes. And we're gonna align that top edge with the top edge of the fabric. So there's the front seam. Let's go ahead and do the side seam. And then I'll just turn it around and we'll do the other side seam. Okay, so we've got all three of those clipped. We'll go ahead and reposition that serge seam on the elastic with the back seam on the shorts. We'll lay that on top of each other. So those just kind of line up. And now we're going to go ahead and place it underneath the presser foot. 
and I'm going to have my needles up and if I need to kind of clear the stitch fingers a little bit so I don't meet any resistance sliding in the elastic in the fabric at this point I can just kind of tweak the threads a little bit towards me grab the tail of the stitch and just kind of tug backwards and that'll clear those stitch fingers all right so now we're just going to scoot it up underneath the presser foot and we're going to use that that area that I mentioned I've mentioned to you multiple times with lining up we're just going to allow the top edge of the shorts and the top edge of the elastic to guide right along uh, where the shiny metal the shiny metal meets the brushed metal and that's going to position it to where it's just going to skim the left edge of the blade cuz we're not really wanting to cut off too much if we if we trim a, a wee little bit it's not a a terribly bad deal so let's start surging. Okay, so I've got it kind of tacked in place. So I'll stop with my needles down. And then here's the next clip. I'm gonna just kind of tug the elastic to where it stretches out. And it might be necessary for me to hold behind also. So I'm gonna hold in front and behind. Hopefully y'all can see what I'm doing here. And then when I... When I stop, I like to stop with the needles down, okay? So I'm, I'm getting close to my clip right here. So I'm gonna grab the clip here out in front and then I'm just gonna kinda give it a tug. You'll just kinda wanna position it a little bit. And at this point, I'm gonna hold right here because when I'm surging over this seam where the mark is, I'm gonna need to remove the clip. So let's remove the clip. I'm going to hold it taut to where that mark stays on top of that seam. And then I'll just once again just kind of grab in the back and start turning. Okay, so now I've got it under, the mark is underneath the needle. So now we're just going to stretch in the front again. Right there. And this time I'll just, just kind of gently hold from the left side. And just continue around till you get back where you began. Now we're getting close back to where we started, so I'm just gonna just stretch it out. Right here is where we started. I wanna make sure I've caught all of that fabric. Looks like I missed just a wee little bit, so I'm gonna surge over that seam. Okay, now at this point, I can just take those needles and um, leave them down and raise my presser foot and I'm just going to gently kind of pivot the fabric to the back, pip, just really gently, and then surge back off the seam. We'll just trim right there at the top of the seam. And so now we have the elastic along the top. We're going to flip it over and towards the inside of the shorts, just like this. Now this might really remind you of a fold over for a blind hem seam. That's really pretty much kind of how that's gonna happen. But I'm gonna let you just watch my process because I think if you watch me do it, it'll make more sense. So here we go, I'm gonna fold it over and then I'm gonna fold it back on itself just like that. So you'll notice that we're gonna have a bit of the fold of the fabric right there. And you wanna kinda line that up right in that area where you're gonna get started. We'll raise our presser foot. We'll slip it, the fabric back up underneath the machine. And I just want both of my needles to grab that fabric. 
I don't need to trim anything off, so we're going to be just kind of skimming the blade a little bit. I'm going to take a couple of stitches because that's going to hold it in place for me. Then it will help me be able to more easily just manipulate my fabric, fold it over, and fold it back. Once you do this a couple of times, it'll be really easy. So I'm just folding over, folding over, and folding it back on itself right here. And then I'm going to stretch this fabric back and see how it nice, it lays, lays nice and flat. Once again, I'll just kind of come out here, fold it over. And fold it back on itself so you have that folded edge I'm gonna hold here and I'm gonna stretch and as that stretch it just kind of makes this section just kind of lay on top of that elastic and you can just stop and adjust it if you need to but I'm still holding back here where I did my fold over I'm gonna do another Another adjustment. Now I'm getting to where I started, so I'm just going to come back here. It's already folded over for me, so I'm just going to grab from here and stretch. I try to keep the folded edge on top of that surged edge. Almost back to the beginning. So here's that tail. We'll go ahead and just kind of pass that up and trim that little tail off. And now we're back where we've surged. So I once again lower my needles and I'm going to raise my presser foot and then just gently kind of pivot towards the back and then surge straight off. Now let's take it over to our little pressing station and see what it looks like. There you have it. Shorts surged together using just a few straight stitches for the hem, but everything else on the serger. Who would have thought it could be that easy? I hope you've enjoyed this bit of education with me. And I hope you run on out and just start surging shorts like crazy. Well, what did you think? Are you excited? You want to go create some shorts or some pants for yourself or for some little one in your family or maybe a friend? Who knows? Well, I hope this tutorial was really good for you. I hope it's given you confidence. So now you can go create something on your serger. Until next time, be so blessed.